What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and today we're going to be building the Elephant Graveyard from Lion King for our hyenas in Planet Zoo. So what I'm doing is just setting up the area I want to use, and my plan was to build a large kind of raised area, so I'm raising the terrain up, because I think this will give us quite a scary, overlooking feeling, where you walk in you feel very small compared to the rest of the environment, which is kind of how uh, Simba and Nala felt in The Lion King when they were walking into the elephant graveyard. Now I wanted to enclose this habitat because it's going to be a little bit of a dead end for this point in the zoo um, and then we're going to have them go a different way round, round the zoo to the right of this build. Obviously we have the Dracula's castle build on the left. So I'm just building out the terrain here. I'm trying to keep it quite rough and I'm using the chisel tool quite a lot just to rough up the terrain and make it look a bit more natural. I'd highly recommend doing that. Just build a little bit more than you actually need and then chip away at it with the chisel tool and it, it looks quite like rough and jagged and quite spooky actually, so it works with this build. Once I was quite happy with the rough shape, I thought I'd start colouring it in with the texture tool. So I wanted the middle bit to be quite heavy soil, um, quite dark um, and barren, because it's got to represent the elephant graveyard. And then the outside is all rocky, but I've tried to mix smooth rock and, and rough rock so it has a bit more texture to it. And now, we, as far as trees, I wanted to build uh, using all of the dead trees essentially because this area is a barren wasteland so I've just made a little group of a bunch of these trees, some of them lying down, some of them stood up and I'm going to essentially copy and paste different sections of this all over to create a, a broken forest. So we have all the trees from our previous builds just kind of gradually gets broken as you approach the elephant graveyard. It's this little deserted, barren section of, of the map. Which also meant replacing quite a lot of the trees we placed from the Dracula's build. Because that had a lot of trees around the outside. I had to quickly move the power supply for the haunted manor and hide it again with some trees. But I'm not worried too much about that because the tree the tree cover is quite good and as long as they're hidden, I don't really mind. They're far enough back that guests won't worry about them anyway. Now I'm building round a little bit. I actually, I, I debated there having a little raised platform and I decided I didn't want that. And I do edit what I've just built there um, with the path because I, I actually make it go into a little cave because I thought that would be cooler to see the hyenas be fed. But I'm, I just wasn't wild on this uh, idea I had there just to have them round. And I made a little water supply because I want to keep this quite a barren wasteland so I didn't want loads of water. but. They obviously need to have some water to drink, so I put that in the corner and we're going to cover it up a little bit later with some bones. And now just trying to disguise the service routes I've got for all the staff and complete the, the broken trees all the way around. Now I'm just building a little rocky uh, section over the over the power and the water because I want to hide them a bit better. Um, and I, 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 if you kind of level it out, it doesn't look too bad. So I, I did a few different levels of the rock. It's just it's a very rough landscape, you know. It's not it's not it doesn't look man-made, so it has quite a good effect and it hides them quite nicely. And then I added in some lighting along there so that the staff can actually see. Thank you. 
Here's what I mean about leveling. I just wanted to level the terrain at different heights so it looks kind of natural, like it's all fallen in that direction. And now we move on to the elephant skull part of the build. Now I've sped this up a little bit to times 10 from our usual time seven. And the reason I've done that is just because it's, it takes ages to place all these little rocks, but I think it's cool to see the process. So I just wanted to speed it up for you. I played around with color and I debated adding the red color like we did in the werewolf build, but it just looked it didn't work, having like a uh, blood in the bones just didn't work for this build because it's supposed to have been there for a very long time. So all the flesh is kind of gone by now. So I just went with lighter colors to represent that bone structure. And I'm using other rocks just to rough it up so it doesn't look too clean and perfect. Now I had the rough shape of what I wanted. This does all get changed a lot later but I had a rough idea of where I wanted to start anyway. And I wanted to build the skull shape. So this is again, just a very rough outline. I'm gonna rough all this, add some layers to it, get some more texture, but I wanted a rough outline of the skull um, so I could see what I was working with and understand if the height was correct or not. And I actually decided this was a little bit too shallow when I looked at it with the, with the tusks as well. So after I build the size up, I do then increase the height a little bit on this too. Now this elephant skull is actually gonna form the shelter portion of the hyena's habitat. So I'm gonna keep it mostly intact, but I'm gonna copy some of what we've got and push it forward and then delete some sections to add some depth to it. And I'm also gonna integrate a lot of different styled rocks. So it's not this one rock pasted over and over. That was just so I could understand the outline. And you can see I'm starting to do that when I work on the eyes here. Originally I planned quite a wide mouth, but it just didn't work and I had a look at what the elephant graveyard actually looks like in the Lion King and it's got quite a small mouth so I decided to close it in a little bit more and keep it a bit more, uh, a bit of a smaller hole for the hyenas to walk through. As long as they have enough room to get in and out, I thought that was fine. And now I'm just adding some other rocks to rough up the, the texture. Now my aim with, with this was to make it look, yes, it's gonna look like the elephant skull, but it's also gonna look a little bit man-made because let's face it, this is a zoo and you're not gonna expect a zoo to have an actual elephant skull and one this big when you think of the scale of the actual animals. This is enormous. So I'm going for a semi-realistic vibe here. Now I'm deleting some sections of the of the tusks just because it adds it has a really good level of depth to it and there's some really good textures in there when you take out some of the levels and move move around some of the levels it looks like it's been worn away with the sands of time and here I'm copying out to get more of a more depth to the build and then deleting some sections so you have different layers just it just looks a lot more powerful when you look at it And I wanted to change the angle of the tusks as well to look a bit more elephant-like because I, I realized they were just coming out of the bottom of the head and that was not realistic. So I was attaching them a bit further up, making them a little bit bigger as well because the actual ones in, in the film are huge. They're really long. So I just wanted to make them a bit bigger, maybe not quite that long, but just a little bit larger. And then chipping one of them off as well like I did before. So there's a broken one.
I'm just adding some texture to the side here as well and I'll copy this over to the other side when I'm done. I wanted to add some entrances to the side as well so the hyenas have more than one entrance so they've got these little side doors that are kind of hidden quite well but it gives them access from from all areas and again just adding more layers deleting some rocks to make it look a bit more interesting adding in some rocks to make it look a bit more interesting there was quite of a repeat process over and over that i was doing here And now I toyed around with the idea of getting rid of the water from there and putting it at the front. But I actually decided to add in the water back there again and keep this at the front as well. Because I thought that having too much water here like that, where the hyenas could drink from it, it was just good. It just didn't work with the build. It didn't work with the barren landscape. So I hid some water further down, had it be a bit more um, closed off. But it means that we don't actually need a barrier at the front because there's this deep drop and then water underneath as well that the hyenas can't get over. So we don't actually need a barrier so the guests can get quite close and personal with the uh, with the hyenas, which would be pretty cool in a real zoo. I don't know how health and safety would feel about it though, because they could, I guess, jump, but I'm not sure they can jump that far. Here's where I decided I was going to make a little bit of a cave. So I just built it over the path I'd built. And then my plan is to have glass viewing areas, have a couple of them along the side. So you can walk in and then you can see through these like little holes. You can see the hyenas and I'm going to have their food in front of one of them. So you can always get a good view from there. And I'm using the, the tough glass, which I haven't really used before, but I figured hyenas probably want some tougher, tougher glass. It's resistance for, why not? And adding in some donation bins. I just kept them kind of gray and black because we're just going for this, again, just doing a barren landscape. I'm gonna say that so many times during this build. But it's just kind of a dark grey gloomy colours and trying to make a rock to colour to match the inside of the cave as well that we can put our viewing boards on much like we did with the werewolf build Now I'm building the second skeleton structure. So I wanted to have like a couple of rib cages of the elephants just lying around in the background at you know, different angles. Some of them are more destroyed than others. So I was playing around with how best to texture this on the top and bottom. And the angles became a bit, a bit awkward after doing what I'm doing now. So I went for a slightly easier approach than this with the top and bottom but I thought I'd include it for the process. You can see here I was having troubles and I was not enjoying that. So I decided, nope, start again and I'll make it with just these pieces so it's all in line still. Just turning them so you get some texture on the top and bottom as well. And once I was happy with kind of the length and width of that, I decided to make the side pieces that are the actual rib bones that come out of the spine. So I'm just building them in, in blocks and then I'm gonna copy and paste them along. And I didn't do the whole thing because they're gonna be stuck in the ground anyway. So I just did that top section that's actually gonna be showing. And I wanted this area to sit over where their water's gonna be. So it provides a little bit of cover, kind of hides that, that water a little bit 
but you know, they can still access it very easily. Have a little swim if they want to. My only regret is that the water's quite far away from the guests, so it's not gonna draw the hyenas to the front of the habitat like you normally want to do. But I, I figured they've got the food there and they're gonna see them anyway. There's no, there's no barrier there, so I'm sure they'll be happy about that. And again, I'm just weathering these, these rib cages by deleting some of the sections, making it look like they've been worn away. And I thought I'd put some enrichment in, but I didn't, it, all the enrichment looked quite ugly, so I was uh, gonna put it on the inside, because it didn't really fit with the theme. And I was going quite heavily on the theme of this one. And I realized with the feeder, I'm gonna have to bring in a, a tree or two. So I just brought in a few trees, because this is kind of a barren landscape, but it's got a few trees that, that used to be there and now they've died. Um, that was my plan. Um, so I can do the same uh, feeder, which is inside a broken tree, as I did in the werewolf build. And then I realized I needed power to be able to do any kind of lighting and it was quite an awkward shape to put power in so I've had to, to dig in some power into the rocks in a couple of areas. But it's quite easy to hide this path um, in the broken forest because it just kind of looks like all the twigs lying on the ground. Now I'm just adding in their water there. And I've tried to put some lights under the water here because from a real world perspective, you need to have lights to light up any area where there's water anyway and guests could quite easily fall into there. They could perhaps do with a fence there, but it didn't, it didn't work in my mind with the design of the build. But for real life, perhaps there should be a fence to stop people falling in. adding some lighting to all the areas, checking that the hyenas can get around okay and can't get into any of the areas we don't want them to. And adding some bedding inside the skull as well. And I wanted to light the inside of the skull with some mood lighting as well, so I just copied the same from the water and I think it looks quite good. And I added some lights in there, in the tusks, just to have a bit of, look like reflection of the water, which I liked. And now finally adding the mist that you always need in a spooky build. And making sure that everything was, was perfect <laughs> before I finished. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe and enjoy the scenery.